Our next speaker is Dom Burry. He's um, a person who's involved, an earth activist, an emotional activist, involved in a lot of things. Um, to quote on his um, on his website, he's um, a devotee to this green, miraculous earth in this time of planetary transfiguration. And he's dedicated to helping birth a new culture on earth, rooted in soul, soil, spirit, and matter that puts the, um, the collective at its center. And he does this through his earth poetry and earth writing. He's been um, widely um, publicized and um, a lot of, uh, lot of writing that he's done and speaking, uh, activism work. Um, he's been published in Poetry Review, Poetry London, um, won um, several uh, different awards and lots of really good, um, lots of really good quotes and things like that from uh, from Dom um, or about Dom. Um, so we're really pleased to to welcome uh, to welcome Dom to this. He's the co-founder of the Brotherhood Temple as well and the Brotherhood Mystery School, which I know links with. Um, I don't know, restructuring, Dom will explain it, I'm sure, but restructuring the way males are and the way they're seen in society and so on. Um, and he has a, a, a new book out uh, next month, is it, Dom, I think? Yeah, next month. Yeah. Um, if you want to just um, take over from now, if you have anything else you want to add to that, um, in particular where we can get the book. Absolutely. And then read some of your your great poetry to us. Thanks so much, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Can everyone see me okay? Can you see me okay, Steve? Just to make sure. Yep, I can. Yes, absolutely. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So, um, yeah. So this is actually I only flew back into the UK literally yesterday after being out of the country for nine months. Mm, uh -huh. and this is the first time I've actually only yesterday been able to hold um, wow. a passage in my hands yesterday. Mm. It was a moment of like sheer like uh yeah like dear lord like <laughs> this thing that i've been working on for like 10 years has finally arrived and yeah it's, this is the first time that i'm reading from it um in the in the in the flesh so yeah it feels like slightly emotional uh, moment um so thank you for being here for this um yeah the the book itself, I mean, what to say about it, it's, it's called Rite of Passage and it really is the journey of, the journey of, um, into our relationship with the earth and into our relationship, our current situation where we are at the planet mm. and very much my own journey, um, down into grief, down into, um, hopelessness and, seeing the world as it is and, and feeling lost and, and um, in, in chaos and in depression and then up again, like only really through being on that downward trajectory and feeling the, the fullness of, 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 the, of the world soul and where we are right now could actually then feel again viscerally life beginning to upwell through me again, saying, this is it, we've come here to this moment this singular time on our planet for this emergency, for this time of emergence through emergency. And we've only had, we've only had to, we've had to come to this moment actually to shift. And it's the mirrors that this crisis brings, which will allow us to do that. Um, and today I will read from the first section of the book, which is very much the, the downward journey into grief, into loss. And then tomorrow I'll read from the the through and the up um, section of the book, which takes us through and then up again into not hope, which is anchored in something which is not, it, which is febrile, but as something that as anchored in the body, the body saying, yes, yes, life, I know I'm here and I'm here now and acting from that place. And that is the trajectory book, which I'll read um, from tomorrow. But right now we're going, we're going down. Um, so I'll start with the first poem of the book. And it is the book is a poem called what my body showed me. 
this window wiped suddenly clear in winter shows the old wood up on the hill i stood in last autumn just to cut an hour out of time to absorb one season giving birth to another the huge trees stripping their own bones clean until i felt i was no longer alone that something else was moving then stopping then locking its breath against sound i listened so intently then i felt my own body leaving me i followed it on unwillingly on until in a clearing up ahead i could see something waiting silent as the snow as if it had been there all along a human that had been taught nothing of love it beckoned to me then i was so afraid but still i edged closer until i could see this person's lidless eyes their utter lack of skin and hear the noise their mouth made as if someone had shown them a film of the whole world burning on repeat as if they had then somehow lived they spoke each morning feels like stepping backwards into boiling rain they said this and at once i knew how before me stood the body i will have to wear if all that can still be saved is lost why I have chosen not to have children. No part of me wants to remember the first time I felt this, dipping hands into the hen house to find each bird a cinder, each egg still scalding hot, but not yet hatched. Later, climbing fields to find cattle birthing the huge black coals of their calves, alive at least until the ash piles cool and the last cow splits. Even our midwives with oven mitts cannot claim our infants' new fevers. Softly they sing, knowing something else burns through them but the limp in their limbs. I feel it too, but say nothing. Now I can hear drought knocking through the forest. Each birch, each braid, each blade of wood, a time sprung match. This is how we come to love only what will not kindle. The flax mud and the estuary still feeding the sea. The damp soil I press into my lover's mouth, pleading. Now only the eyeless stand and signal for weather. I have heard thunder shake out the whole sky and bear none. And to think we thought the boatman's song no warning. How we sold him all our rain and cut him dumb. All I can offer you is this. How on evening, each autumn, a little after dark, the swallows return home. How you can hear them in the roof, their wings clicking low, their hive mind shutting down, each map that followed without intention, another map to these eaves, this house. I come alive here. Then I heal. This autumn, the swallows have not come home. The kitchen is silent, but for the click of the clock and the whir of the drum and the hum of the stove and the drone of the telephone. And the world is now lighter, yet somehow, somehow also more heavy. And I will finish today's reading um, 
in this short reading with um, a slightly longer poem, which will take about five minutes. And it is the kind of the centerpiece of the book. And it's kind of moving through grief and through um, prophetic um, landscapes and situations of uh, requiem, really, of lost ecology and lost um, lost seasons. And it really is the this the, the point of the book where we've come to that point of collapse and of crisis. And it is called Love as a problem as a project for small children with eyelids. Yes, I want to love, but every time I close my eyes, all I can see is the orchard burning, my eyelids kissing the flames to sleep, my throat full of apples, full of fire, too white to hold. My mother, with excellent reason, and precisely at 2.16 each morning, will, no matter the heat, no matter the danger, flick on the old battery-powered radio she stole in the first hour afterwards, while everyone else still living was busy stashing baked bean tins down their trousers. I think of this, and I think of the last time I felt anything close to desire. The body of my lover, now a murder victim's chalk outline, plastered mid-step on the front wall of my house, where my mother, with her radio turned on low, waits. She says it will not be long. She says if it is not, we have enough chicken stock to last eight winters. She says we are lucky because we fell with our eyes wide open. She says do not look away. She says watch. She says, despite the hour coming, passing, when he should have, God will still come. She says this, and I say, this is what we mustn't tell the children who've had to watch their mothers immolating. The soft flesh opening the way only the body can. The body a halo of fire. I watch at night through the steel slatted windows, the hole in the city men in the city where the broken men come through. A father and three daughters worn across his chest like shawls, like lambs come begging for food. He comes with three, he leaves with two. And still I am amazed at what a crushed bruise shows, more at what its shadow chooses to keep hidden now. A small child with a knife in his sock, leading a priest into a darkened room. My stomach writhing then like a barrel full of drowning birds in the square, directly outside our house, which used to be a market, which used to be full of wheeling birds, which was bombed which I ran through after, bagging up fruit, my coat pockets rattling, full of celeriac, knuckles, pomegranates. Isn't it funny how all I know of longing is watching my mother separate a wren from its wings, and my own shoulders ached then, or winter for spring. How last autumn I watched a boy strip barbies to their skin, take corkscrews to each orifice to make them holy, holy, hung them from the branches to watch something, anything sing. But then what can we do with desire now but bury it deep inside ourselves? Even my own father, unloading his fists into me, feels now like some form of ecstasy, and still I yearn. Still I ache to know his cool hand on my spine, guiding me home. Lord, rocking on her knees, my mother prays over and over for deliverance. From the sun and the lilies, huge with exhaustion. Their hands, her hands open to the sky for rain. But heaven is empty and her God annihilated. But still she waits for the radio to break into what? Daffodils, unicorns, something edible. She says, listen, she says, you must still believe we will somehow make this through. 
by bringing up old wounds to heal the new, by taking the body of Christ in our mouths and swallowing whole. But then what use is confession, mother, when the weight of each word is erased before it can even be uttered, a line of crows eviscerating a white field, a white field eviscerated in snow. From the na radio's nagging blank hum, my mother breaks to speak. I watch the manic light in her eyes replace the fire in her skin. I tend her slack mouth as if it were a wound of my own, tipping in milk to plug the stomach towards starvation, elation, nothing but the small heat escaping cold, the flume for which her last heat goes. I press her eyes flat to the window. This is the world then. This jar of soot we spit blood into. She says, yes, yes, it ends. My body, still alive, still hungry, says soon crocuses, fresh lilies, ash giving old life to what is new. For this only mother, Am I willing to know how fire entering the body feels? Thank you so much. It was a long epic poem and I'm really glad I read it. Um, um, I'm just gonna post a couple of links. Yeah. Okay, into the- um, Thank you into the so much for all, the, for those words. They're really powerful, beautiful words. I really enjoyed them. And I know there's been a lot of um, really nice comments about it as well. Beautiful poems, um, strong words. And uh, uh, one person, Danielle, said it's very appreciated as rites of passage have disappeared for many. And poetry is valuable as it can make present the metaphorical or actual death. It's a rite of passage to something new and a new life or way of being. Yeah, and absolutely. humanity is in a dark night of the soul right now. And many are facing the death and hopefully the rebirth 100 percent. and yeah for me that's this is this is it it's this we it is a rite of passage we're entering we're in it we're in it we will be for the next 10 20 years potentially um but the amount of inspiration i've already felt today being on a call with everyone here yeah is this moment and it's the life that is now erupting through us which will then mm. emerge and create this this new this, this world that we know is possible that our hearts and souls know is possible thank you so just placed a few links there um my yeah, thanks yeah the launch just to share if anyone would love to come to the launch party i would love to have them there it's um it's um be it will be a wild expression of life musicians <clears throat> poets speakers people like satish kumar bruce lyon um mm all coming together to like help me launch this book and as a collective, as a collective voice. Yeah. It's me. Um, and so if anyone wants to come, the links are all there. Um, yeah, I certainly plan on being there. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me. That's, that's great. And we'll look forward to seeing you again at the same thank you. time. Yeah, tomorrow. we'll go up next time. We'll go up. That's it, great. <laughs> it's my great pleasure to be able to introduce Don Burry, who uh, read some of his poetry and told us about the things he's he's doing yesterday. It um, went, he gave us some poetry that he said was taking us downwards. Today, he said he's going to lift us up a bit, which will be, will be good. Um, Don's known probably a, a lot for his, for his poetry and his writings. He's had a, a, other work that he's won prizes for. Um, he has a new book coming out next month called Rite of Passage that he, he's been reading from, which is excellent. Um, but he does so much more work uh, as well um, with his uh, activism and uh, uh, gender work for men, looking at what we're traditionally expected and how things can change, um, which is on donbury.com. So um, I'm sure... What we really want to do now is to 
listen some listen some more to Dom. So over to you, Dom. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Um, hello again, everyone. Um, thank you for having me back again today, Steve. And yeah, that's right. Um, we are we've gone down, and this is the the whole um, journey really that is rite of passage, which I will show you here. This is rite of passage, and uh, like top marks and bonus points for anyone who I can actually spot the XR um, symbol in there, which is around around the raven. For anyone who can actually spot that, um, sn sn snuck in there somehow. Um, yeah, so really, rite of passage is this journey, and it's this journey of um down and through and feeling everything that is um to be felt now with the with the world quaking and with the earth um yeah feeling the grief of, of everything and this hopefully gives people a a portal and an, an access point to do that in order to actually feel what comes after the grief which is life which is life upwelling through us and this is the section of the book which i'll read from now which is the point really we've come down to the the darkest hour to the darkest hour and what comes afterwards so i'll read from a few poems from the book now thank you afterwards it is in fact remarkably hard to kill something completely. Even a human with what he believes is rightfully his struggles. The chicken still throbbing around his feet with a half lopped head. Even a continent utterly raped fires up new shoots, forests, species eventually. Even the birds on their scorched wires, their wings return. And can you blame me if knowing this, I lie flat on the ground to feel the hot stones taking off all my clothes, my red body still smoking, still alive with all the required ecstasy. Let it be so. Let us build something more than what we believe our bodies are capable of. For what we believe is human, is broken. Pray that these flames fold free to do their own swift work. Seeing the whole world begin kindling. And this is a very much a poem which was written after two years of being in bed um, in 2016-2017 with uh, ME chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, and really the relationship that they had with um, anxiety and ecological grief and where we were in the world. Seeing the whole world begin kindling, I shut myself off from it. From the blue sky and the sea and the salmon lashing its black water white. Too long from the woods that breathe me, the soil that is now being burnt away. Until illness came thicker than any kind of dark water and laid me out, gave me a bed and two long years to sweat through. Outside, the world went on. Inside, fever rolled across my body's new landscape, and I dragged myself to each of its craggy edges, begging for a cure. Nothing but more heat came, and I crawled back in bed and collapsed back for another year until I was so afraid, until I began to dream the dreams no human should dream of Europe in front of me, like a bombed out cathedral, of all those I love dying on repeat. I wept so wildly then. I, a grown man, wept and shook and shook until I was no longer afraid till I felt something other than the voices of my own domestication wake in me. And I felt the cool air filtering in through my teeth again, and the life that had deserted me drip back in, slowly at first, then at a rush. Then the whole room was full of fresh water, 
and a new voice came, rising up from a deeper well, shouting, stand now for the life you have been given. Stand so that others can find courage in these times to do so too. And so I hauled myself up and out of bed and dragged myself downstairs and threw the carcass of my old life out onto the garden and prayed for the earth sap to rise up through me again like a purer kind of water, electric to the touch of my new skin. I prayed for the strength of my own bones then, for the guidance of my heart crashing in its cage, for my soul that I had left too long to wander someone else's road. It calls out to me now as the wheeling buzzard called. It says, listen to what I ask of you. Stand out tonight under the dark sky. Wait for a greater pulse to rise up through you there. Let it guide you towards resurrection. It says, run naked out onto the street, singing for the soil and the soft earth. It needs you now to burn inside as brightly as the forests outside burn. The ashes these mad times bring are here the rising out of. It says, never be afraid, but if you answer stubbornly the sound of your wild heart beating, that the one house we live in will one day be green. Letter from my daughters. Standing on top of the hill, they force a small child, half their age, half their strength, into an old oil barrel with a stray badger they trapped earlier, then set light to it. Push it downhill towards the forest below us, so dry you can hear the roots cracking up. So parched the moment the barrel hits, every tree explodes and the clearing becomes, becomes, okay. and the clearing also in the air between the child and the badger who scrap on in flames but still fighting and the wood becomes a forest, becomes a continent burning. But father, this is not all that exists in the world. This is only how you see it. Yes, good acts come and go and are forgotten. Yes, bad actions stick like tar in the teeth, but these are our own bodies, Father, and we will choose what we do with them. Let us come now. Let us come like a gift to the world, not as if by having us, you are spitting on it. Change it. Yes, we can. Watch how we step out of the drenched woods, singing with our own futures in our arms and set fire to your own preconceptions. Say, Father, do not be scared. Do not be afraid now to let the good light enter you. If we can say anything back, Father, let it be this. And I will finish um, the reading today with the final poem in the book before the, the out, the out breath, and it is called Threshold. And so we go now as one into the gathering darkness, not knowing how long the night will last or how many terror dreams it may take to pass these hours, or even if a different world will come at all, but destined now to walk as one humanity this road together. And so we light our fires and wait without hope together, for hope would be hope of the wrong dawn. And so we hold each other close and wait without love, for love would be love of the wrong future. Make no mistake, this is the hour we rise or fall together. 
this is the hour we face our own extinction and choose whether we live or whether we die together. Yes, love, the hour is not of our choosing. Yes, love, I too sometimes would want to be born to another life than this. And yet, in this same breath, I know how nothing has gone wrong, been broken, thrown out of kilter, that we have now to be taken to the edge of death, to choose how we live. This becomes then the most sacred of mirrors. Will you stand by me in its dark glare a while? Will you feel me shudder and allow yourself to fully shudder also? For all it really asks us to give up is our unwillingness to surrender. The fragile shrouds and masks we choose to wear, to break open to ourselves again, again. This is for me the way forward now, to keep on trusting moment by moment. This feeling deep in my bones that knows out of the rubble of this one, a new world is going to come. So if we have now to be taken to the edge of death, to come back in the very nick of time, to life, to our collective love, to understand what it means to be human, let it be so. Thank you. Um, so this is, um, write a passage, just show you, show it one more time. I only, I only managed to get my hands on it yesterday, so I'm still a little bit giddy with excitement. Yeah. Great. <laughs> can I just, can I share, um, when the launch party is? is yes, right? please. Yeah, that'd be great. Amazing. So and maybe write your, your website in any of the information you can give us. That'd be really great. Good. Great idea. I can do that right now. So Rite of Passage launches on the 15th of, um, the 15th of um, April, next month, two, literally about two and a half weeks. Not long now. Um, it is, um, yeah, it's been 10 years in the, 10 years in the dark since wow. these worlds started, first started coming through me. Um, and I've just added the details there for anyone who would like to pre-order the book. Um, for anyone who would like to get in touch with me, um, for anyone who would love to come to the launch, the launch will be on the 15th, and it will be very much a collective telling of the myth of the book, where we'll have mm. speakers and musicians and, and writers and yeah. um, people coming, um, like Satish Kumar, Bruce Lyon, and Pascal Petit, to come and weave the journey of the book with us. Um, so anyone who wants to that, I would love to see you there. And thank you so much for having me, Steve and, and Krista. Yeah, there, 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 there's so many people have um, made comments in the chat, which you're welcome to have a look through if you want. Um, <laughs> very, you know, um, powerful poems on ME. My father has had ME for over 30 years and your words resonate deeply and how beautiful they think your words are, which I can certainly agree with. Mm. It's been really good, a real privilege to to uh, connect with you yesterday and today, Dom. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you.